guys and welcome back to Turtles World. This video is for Marvel 3 Elementary School. And today, you guys will be joining me in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Okay, so let me show you some of my books here. This is the one I'm going to be reading you, Harry Potter A Magical Year. I got it from my library. And I also have Lego Harry Potter, the um, Wizarding World. It's kind of hard to say the name. <laughs> and then I have this book that you write in. I guess I could show you some of the pages right here. Most of them are blank. And I also have a wand, another wand, so. Um, and I have book seven of Harry Potter. Okay, so let's start reading. Harry Potter, A Magical Year. I'm gonna read January till February 18th. <laughs> okay, there we go. January, all in all, they were glad when the rest of the school returned shortly after New Year, and Gryffindor Tower became crowded and noisy again. Promise me you'll look after yourself. Stay out of trouble. I always do, Miss Weasley, said Harry. I like a quiet life. You know me. Harry Potter and the, Bla and the Half-Blood Prince. January 2. Chairs slid backward again as the night bus jumped from the Brigham motorway to a quiet country lane full of harpins, harpin bends. Hedge growers on either side of the road were leaping out of their way as they mounted the verges. From here, they moved to the main street in the middle of the bussy town. Then to a viaduct surrounded by a tall hill, then to a windswept road between high-rise flats, each time with a loud bang. I've changed my mind, muttered Ron, picking himself up from the floor of the sixth time. I never want to ride here again. January 3rd, the six of them struggled up the slippery drive toward the castle, dragging their trucks. Dragging their trunks. Hermione was already talking about knighting a few elf hats before bedtime knitting. Harry glanced back when they reached the oak front doors. The night bus had already gone. Harry glanced out of the corridor windows as they passed. The sun was already sinking over the grounds, carpeted in deeper snow that had lain over the burrow garden. In the distance, he could see Hagrid feeding Buckbeed in front of his cabin. The picture is beautiful here, snow. Oh, hang on, password, absence, precisely, said the lady in a feeble voice and swung forward to reveal a portrait pole. What's up with her? said Harry. Over indulging over Christmas, apparently, said Hermione, rolling her eyes as she led the way into the packed common room. But at that moment, there was a loud squeal. Wooden, wooden! The lavender brown came hurtling out of nowhere and flung herself into Ron's arms. At that moment, Neville toppled into the common room. How he had managed to climb through the portrait hole was anyone's guess, because his legs had been stuck together with what they recognized at once as the leg locker curse. Oof. Serious case. You can take Nelda's potions, asked um, Zachary Smith suspiciously. <laughs> Having concerned Harry in the entrance hall after lunch. Good lord, you must be terrible, 
Snape doesn't usually give extra lessons, does he? I love the picture of the potions here. January 9th. I'm saying this one because it's Professor Snape's birthday. As there is a little foolish wand waving here, many of you will hardly believe this magic. I don't expect you will really understand the beauty of the softly shimmering cauldron with its shimmering fumes, the delicate powder of liquid that creeps through human veins, betwitching the mind, ensnaring the senses. I could teach you how to bottle a flame, brew glory, even stopper death. If you aren't as big as a bunch, of dunderheads as I usually have to teach. Severus Snape. Detention Saturday night at my office, said Snape. I don't take cheek from anyone, Peter Potter. Not even the chosen one. Professor Sprout had the prophet propped against the bottle of ketchup. He and was reading of the front page with such concentration that she was not noticing the gentle drip of egg yolk falling into her lap from her stationary spoon. <laughs> it was Professor Tellerwain gliding toward them as though on wheels. She had put on a green sequin dress in honor of the occasion, making her look more than ever like a glittering oversized dragonfly. The last thing anyone wanted to feel like doing was spending two hours on the grounds on a raw January morning, but Hagrid had provided a bonfire full of salamanders for their enjoyment, and they spent an unusual good lesson collecting dry wood and leaves to keep the fire blazing while the flame Loving lizards scampered up and down the crumbling, white, hot logs. Well, write in your homework plan then, said Hermione encouragingly, so you don't forget. Harry and Ron exchanged looks as they reached into their bags, withdrew the planner, and opened it tentatively. tentatively. Don't leave it till later, or, or you... Big second ratter chitted the book. Hermione, who was sweaty faced and had soot on her nose, looked livid. Her half finished antidote comprising 52 ingredients, Whew! including a chunk of her own hair bubbled sluggishly behind her slughorn, who had eyes for nobody but Harry. Harry knew that Hermione had meant well, but that didn't stop him from being angry with her. He had been the owner of, of the best broom in the world for a few short hours, and now, because of her interference, he didn't know whether he would ever see it again. Ah, uh, Harry, how often this happens even between the best of friends. Each of us believe that what he has to say is much more important than anything the other might have contributed. Albus Dumbledore. Snow was still thick upon the grounds, and the greenhouse windows were covered in constant con condensation so thick that they couldn't see out of them in the herbogly. Headless hats! shouted George as Fred waved in a pointed hat decorated with a fluffy pink feather as the watching students. Two galleons each! Watch Fred now! Fred swept the hat onto his head, beaming. For a second, he merely looked rather stupid. Then, both hat and head vanished. Whoa. 
What does Patronus look like? Said Harry curiously. Each one is to the wizard who conjures it. So many students filled past the hospital wing, trying to catch a glimpse of her that Madame Perfromi took out her curtains again and placed them around Hermione's bed to spare her the shame of being seen with a furry face. Ron, Harry and Ron went to visit her every evening. When the new term started, they brought her day's homework. If I'd sprouted whiskers, I'd take a break from work, said Ron, tipping a stack of books onto Hermione's bedside table on one morning. As they passed the drumstring ship moored in the lake, they saw Victor Crumb emerge onto the deck, dressed in nothing but swimming trunks. He was very skinny indeed, but apparently a lot tougher than he looked. Because he climbed up onto the side of the ship, stretched out his arms, and dived right into the lake. Jeez. Look at this pirate ship, too. It's really nice. Whoever drew this did a very good job. Harry took a great breath and slid under the surface. And now, sitting on the marble bottom of the bubble-filled bath, he heard a chorus of eerie voices singing to him from the open egg in his hands. Myrtle puffed him herself up in shrieked. Let's all throw books at Myrtle because she can't feel it. Ten points if you get if you can get it through her stomach. Fifty points if you can get it through her head. Well, <laughs> what a lovely game! I don't think. Wood was working the team harder than ever. Even the endless rain that had replaced the snow couldn't dampen his spirits. The Weasleys complained that Wood was becoming a fanatic. But Harry was on Wood's side. If they won their next match against Hufflepuff, they would overtake Slytherin in the house championship for the first time in seven years. Now, I'm going to read this one because it's going to be somebody's birthday. January 26th is Professor Lockhart's birthday. Come on now, round them up, round them up. They're only pixies, Lockhart shouted. He rolled up his sleeves, brandished his wand, and bellowed, Pe Pescipi Pestronium. It had absolutely no effect. One of the pixies seized his wand and threw it out of the window, too. Like, wee! <laughs> You'd be surprised, said Ron, who was looking apprehensively at the book. Some of the books the ministry confiscated, Dad told me. There was one that burned your eyes out. <laughs> and everyone who reads... Some tent of the sorcerer spoke in a limerick for the rest of their lives, and some old witch in the bath had a book that you could never stop reading. I think I'm going to stop right here for now because the book is so thick. But anyways, if you want me to read more, just request it. And um, I'm still going to be reading this, so don't worry. But anyways, to Marble 3 elementary teachers and students, happy reading!